It's been a year uh, today actually since I bought my Fujifilm X-T4 and in today's video I just want to share with you uh, my long-term review, my experience and what I think honestly about this camera after a year of use in different situations, different conditions and different style of photography. Hi, my name is Thierry Gibraltar, an aspiring photographer and videographer based in Tokyo, Japan. And today we're going to talk about uh, my review, my honest review of the Fujifilm X-T4 after one year of use. So yes, about a year ago, I bought this camera after some extensive research because I just wanted to start photography in a more serious way. Um, well, serious. Let's say that I'm not a professional photographer by any mean, but I just wanted to have a proper camera that I could use and that I could, well, take picture that I could be proud and that I could enjoy, right? So after a bit of research, uh, I ended up buying the Fujifilm X-T4, right? And so today is just a video to give you my honest opinion about the camera after one year. I've basically done a bit of travel photography with it, uh, street photography, product photography, uh, food photography also that I'm uh, enjoying, and also portrait photography. So I've tried several styles of photography, and I think that's also why I could give an um, interesting opinion. And I could uh, help you, maybe, maybe you're in the same position as where I was one year ago. Uh, I could help you to decide whether or not this camera is for you. So yeah, let's dive right into uh, the characteristics of this camera. When it comes to the weight and the size of the camera, I would say that the Fujifilm X-T4, it's big enough to handle pretty much any lens. You can pair it with any lens and you will be able to handle it properly and comfortably. And it's also small enough so that you don't really think about it and feel it during the day. When you carry it over travel or your street photography, you don't think about its size and its weight because it's not that heavy. It's about 520 gram, which, okay, you can say you can feel it, but if it's in your bag or if you're carrying it with a strap, honestly, it's not a heavy camera by any mean. It's something that you can feel comfortable walking around with and that is not bulky either. So yeah, I think it's a great combination for what it proposed with this weight and size. All right, build quality. So when you look uh, at Fujifilm cameras in general, uh, they have a great build quality. But the X-T4 especially, I believe, uh, with this beautiful grip, uh, the beautiful finish. So I have the black, the noir version, right? Um, I think it's really good quality. Uh, I've used it in, as I told you, in different weather, uh, different condition, in dust, in snow, in rain also and the camera has never failed. Um, I've used it extensively in the streets. Uh, some, I, I, I take care of my gear, so I never really like bumped the camera or like did uh, crazy things like that. Never dropped it on the floor, but overall for a normal use case, I uh, don't have like crazy scratches on it. I never had any button falling off or anything like that. So if you're thinking about buying this camera, uh, you can be assured that, yeah, it has good build quality. The weather resistance uh, works properly. Uh, nothing bad to say uh, on, on this point. When it comes to image quality, you have a 26 megapixel uh, trend sensor that produces great images paired with the correct lens, right? So Fujifilm produces beautiful lenses and uh, the 20, 26 megapixel trend sensor, uh, great colors. I don't have any problem with the image quality. 
that I um, have from the image produced with this camera. Yeah, I don't think that even once I thought, oh, I, I wish I had grabbed a full frame camera because the, the images would have been way better. I don't think it, it, ne it ever happened. So I never felt like this camera was limiting me in terms of image quality. So if you're debating whether or not to grab a full frame or this uh, particular camera, the Fuji X-T4 for image quality, but you are also looking into, you know, size and weight, I would say, honestly, don't think about the image quality as an issue uh, for the crop sensor for this particular camera. I mean, you will not be able to notice any difference. So when it comes to IBIS, this is one of the most important point when it comes to differentiate from the X-T3 to the X-T4, right? Um, well, the IBIS, it's 6.5 stops of uh, image stabilization. Well, it can be really useful in some situations. I personally, when I shoot videos, I shoot mostly handheld. I don't have a gimbal at the moment. I feel like, yes, the IBIS is really helpful it really removes a lot of those micro movements that you can have in a shot and allows you to have like some, um, well, some usable shots that you can use for your videos, your reels or whatever, however you want to use them, right? So I think the IBIS is a real, is a real plus on this camera. The image stabilization is properly done and make the shots usable. And when you pan over, you don't have any uh, weird distortion or movement created by this IBIS. Um, or, I mean, at least in my use cases, I did not manage to see the, this kind of uh, problems. So yeah, the IBIS is definitely a plus compared to the X-T3. And it's something that's, uh, I think, Fujifilm, yeah, succeeded in doing. Now let's talk about battery life. I think battery life is also a really, really big deal with this camera. Uh, I've talked about, I mean, I've talked with some people that own the X-T3 and they tell me that, yeah, for one day of shoot, they need five to six batteries, right? Um, yeah, I've never went over two batteries in one day. And I've shot, for example, when I went to the Fox Village, I've shot in the cold, uh, maybe a thousand pictures and I don't know how many how many minutes of videos uh, 4k 60 I did not manage to finish my two batteries right I only have two batteries I only purchased two batteries and yeah the battery life is great one point that I don't like though about uh, the topic of battery which is not really battery life but it's a battery is that the camera doesn't come with an external charger you have to charge your battery through the camera. And this, I think it's not, uh, yeah, I wish they had uh, included um, an external charger for the X-T4 because, well, when you want to charge your camera, you need to, you, your battery, you need to plug your camera. And that's just not, not good, right? Um, I just don't want to do that. And yeah, you just want to charge your batteries, just your batteries, right? Like, like, like anybody, anyone will do. So I hope, yeah, maybe for, for the future version, I don't know, XT5 or whatever, not that I'm looking into upgrading, but yeah, that they include this because they have it for the XT3, so why not have it for the XT4? All right, so now let's talk about the flexibility of uh, video and photography, right? So this uh, camera, the Fuji X-T4, has a switch between still and movie. So meaning that whenever you want to switch, I mean, you're taking pictures and you want to switch to a movie mode, you can do so by just switching one little, uh, well, one little switch. <laughs> uh, so by doing so, uh, all your settings from still and all your settings from movies are separately saved into the camera and when you switch from a mode to another they go back to the previous setting right so this is really uh, helpful uh, i don't know uh, about your use case but for my use case when i travel or when i i don't know take pictures of food or product i like you know taking 
a video of the setup or taking a video of uh, where I am when I'm traveling and right after oh I see something interesting so I just take a picture and I just do it with the switch and I can directly you know go from dial control for my videos to uh, actual you know uh, rings uh, for my uh, for my steel um, setup so this is really helpful um, I think that's great and I think it should be included in uh, uh, their future cameras because it's for me it's a perfect hybrid camera right now I, I don't have any problem with it and um, it facilitates my uh, transition between stills and movies and with that I can create the videos and pictures that I want so yeah great point on that all right and now let's talk about also uh, well the screen right so I've read a lot of mixed reviews, I would say, on the uh, flipping screen on the XC4. Some people say, yeah, it's great. Some people think that, oh, it's not great because you cannot, you know, reach some position or yeah, with time, the, the screen is gonna get bad. Well, let me tell you that after a year, my screen is perfectly fine. Uh, I don't have any problem with it and for me, it's super helpful. Why? Because sometimes my camera is in position that, uh, well, I don't know, super up high or super low. And I can use that flip screen to either look at the screen or, you know, get the screen out of the way because I want to, I don't know, plug some cables or whatever. Um, and yeah, it has been really helpful. And in fact, right now I'm filming myself and I can look at, at myself in the screen right now to make sure that I'm in focus my hair is correct etc and my hair it's not correct for sure but that's fine <laughs> so yeah the flip screen is good and i don't think that it's a bad yeah it's not a bad design it's not i mean well it depends on your use case but for me it has been really helpful and if you're an, a hybrid shooter like i am yeah i think it's definitely a plus so with this camera you can shoot 4K 60 and Full HD 240 FPS, right? Yeah, what do you want more, honestly? Uh, maybe right nowadays uh, some cameras include 8K, but for most of the people, honestly, I don't think most of the people need 8K nowadays. Uh, in fact, uh, I mean, you can shoot in 8K, but will your computer be able to process the 8K footage? That's another issue, right? So yes, you have a small compact body that can allow you to do 4K 60 or Full HD 240p, uh, 240 frame per second, sorry. So yeah, I don't see any drawback in that. So as a conclusion, right? So it may sound like I love the camera and I do love this camera because for a price range of $1,600, you get a body that allows you to have great image quality, a great build quality, image stabilization, um, great battery life, and a bunch of functionalities, right? It's highly customizable. You have full control over your exposure thanks to the dials. So yeah, I think it's a great camera and it's a really great camera for hybrid shooters. So I'm a hybrid shooter. I like shooting videos and also stills. So I use this camera and I only have one camera. And yeah, I can only recommend the, the Fuji X-T4. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and that uh, yeah, I was clear with my review. And let me know in the comment if you have any more questions, if you disagree with some point that I, uh, that I said. And yeah, if you, enjoyed, if you enjoyed this video, consider to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video where I think I'll talk about the lenses that I own uh, after a year and why I own those lenses and uh, how I use them uh, during my, my different shoots. So if you want to see this video, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So I'll see you in the next one and yeah, see you guys.